What is up, guys? We're Williams, aka the Swole Fester, here to educate you on health and social well being. I'm currently at my fiance Amber's apartment right now. She's behind the camera. Y'all see how to Amber. Anyway, um, today, guys, I'm going to be taking you through my final volume SVD day on this block. And I'm excited for this day for a few reasons. So, to kind of get you guys caught up, I still have one more SVD intensity day left after this, but this past SVD intensity day went really, really well. I hit um, 420 pounds on squats for triple at RP7. I hit 287 pounds um, for a triple at RP7 on bench. And then I hit 496 pounds for a triple on the deadlift. Now, um, the main things I want to focus on, first of all, is just kind of showing you guys like the difference between the last time I hit 420 pounds for a triple at like an RPE crazy mega height RP10. Come on! Come on! Let's go! Is there? Let's go! Oh, come on! Get up! Get up! Get up! Come on! Come on! Let's go! Come on! Come on! Come on! Get up! Get up! Come on! Strong! Get up! Son! Strong! Easy! Woo! Compare it to this past Saturday where I hit it for a triple at RP7. So as you guys can see, it looks so much better, so much smoother, so much cleaner with way less effort. And it just feels really good to know that I'm like, you know, able to hit that type of weight like confidently, like not without a whole bunch of hype. So like that, I mean, I get hyped anyway, like for all my lists, but not like, yo, I don't know if I'm going to get this or not. Like at no point did I feel like I wasn't going to get that. So squats are still just on the up and up, moving, cruising along. I'm really happy about that. Um, the bench press is still moving really well. Hitting 287 for a triple RP7, especially like, when I'm not like, you know, close to a meet is really big for me. I think I'm actually going to be uh, hitting a solid PR um, for a triple this next upcoming SPD intensity, which I will be showing you guys that. Now, the only thing that I wasn't happy about was the deadlift. So I'm going to let that play. So as you guys can see, that was a PR, that was 496 pounds for a triple. Now the thing is, that was supposed to be around like an RP7. And based upon the 485 that I hit um, the previous week for a triple at RP6, I thought, you know, a nice little 10 pound jump should be fine. All my warrants felt fine. The issue is after that first rep, getting back in position for preceding reps, especially on the conventional, is just very, very difficult for me. You guys already know that even like when I'm beltless and I'm really forcing and cueing the extension, you guys saw my beltless deadlifts, that even though I can get far more neutral um, than what I can with that belt on, it's just, it's still difficult for me to even do that just because of my leverages. So when I have the belt on, it just wants to fold me even more. So doing preceding reps is such a pain when it takes me so much effort just to get in position for the first rep. So the two things I've done is one, I've ordered uh, a new belt since my current insert lever belt is a 13 millimeter and it's like very thick. I ordered a 10 millimeter um, small A7 belt, just a prong belt. Um, buddy Liam, he is using that and he says that it feels a lot better for his dad. So I'm gonna be starting to use that to help me out as well. And then the next thing that I'm gonna be doing, which is what I'm excited about today is, as I may or may not have mentioned on the channel, I'm not sure, I know I've mentioned on Instagram, but Brendan and I are thinking about switching me back to Sumo. Those of you who've been with the channel for like at least the past year, know when I first started working under Brendan, I was technically pulling Sumo, and then we started you know, pulling Sumo and Conventional, trying to decide which way we wanted to go, like which direction we wanted to go with it. But then we had to cut the Sumos out when I had to stop squatting for about two to three months because I was just dealing with flare-ups with my um, hips from just the type of programming that I was doing um, before Brendan when I was under a different coach. So, um, due to that, we kind of just, you know, kept Sumo out for a while. But ever since that California trip that we took, we reintroduced Sumo, it's been feeling really, really good. It's still only ever been used for like a variation on my secondary days. But at this point, with everything we've put together, I managed to hit like 474 pounds for a set of four last week for my top set at like RP7. And that's pretty good to be hitting that on a secondary day. And the main thing we've been trying to figure out for me is like, okay, can I get my hips set properly? 
um, find the right stance for me, make sure I can stay on the quads because, you know, with heavier loads, that's the biggest thing with my sumo. Can I maintain proper form and positioning? And so far, it looks like we finally found the way that I'm able to do that. So I'll be showing you guys that today. So that's what I'm excited for because today I should pretty much be hitting like PRs on everything in those secondary day in terms of like five and four rep PRs. Five rep PRs on the squat and bench and a four rep PR on the deadlift. So we're gonna see how that goes. And if I'm hitting what I'm thinking I'm gonna hit on the sumo, then it might be time to kind of make that switch to where sumo is now my primary comp style of pulling and the convention might be the variation. We'll see. Um, but that being said, I'm not going to tell you guys what I'm planning on hitting today just because I don't want to like put that number out there and then feel like, okay, I said it, so now I kind of have to do it because I really want to make sure I'm being true to RPEs. So we're going to see how the build-up sets go. But anyway, that's enough talking. I know Amber's ready to go. We're going to get to the gym and get in this work. time. Depress. So I just wanted to show you Amber's top set really quickly because I want to emphasize how she was taking her time with her setup. So much to the point where when she unracked it and it didn't feel great, she put it down and then unracked it again. And that was, that, whether it's squat, bench, deadlift guys, something that I beat to all my clients, something that I know Brendan beats to me and all these clients, is to just take your time. The motto I like to go by with my clients is slow setup and fast execution. Take your time to get in the best position under the bar, whether you're doing squats or you're getting the most optimal position for your for your pulls on deadlifts, get the best position on the bench for the bench press because you want that optimal force transfer. You can't do that if you're not in the most optimal position based upon you know your individual build and technique. And it, it, even beyond just with lifting, guys, even like with your mobility work, when you're warming up, take your time with your mobility work. Take your time with your build-up sets. Like, you know, we're always talking about like, you know, health, fitness, social well-being on this, right? I don't want people thinking that this is just like a powerlifting only channel. It's not. You guys can see like all a lot of my older videos and even some of my recent ones aren't just really related to powerlifting. But in terms of like, I'm so tired of powerlifters and coaches being like, oh, you know, pains, aches, it's just part of the game. And, you know, it just is what it is. And that's true to the degree of you may deal with certain pains, you may deal with certain aches periodically as you do this, especially as you start getting like those extremely heavy loads. But you can always make it healthier and not have to deal with a bunch of injuries and constant hurts and aches if you go about your preparation correctly, if you go about really working on your form technique. And I just want to like emphasize the importance of drilling that in. Don't just get under the bar and move weight. Have intent with everything that you do, every movement with your your setup, make sure there's some tip behind it. Anyway, uh, my warm and builds felt really good. I'm about to do my top set now. We've got like, I think it's 402 or 403, whatever the kilo conversion is, um, on the bar. I'm gonna hit it for a top set of five and we need it to be RP8, so we'll see how it goes. smoke 403 pounds it's like it's a 45 pound bar so 100 and instead of 182.5 it's 183 kilograms so that's like 403 pounds for a top set of five at rpa on my secondary spd day my volume based SPD days are my second SPD days of the week this is the fourth training week so it's the final like you know volume spd day on this block and I just hit a huge PR. Like, like the fact that I'm in the 400s on my secondary day in the off season, only my second block in the off season. Like, 
I'm, this has been great, guys. I told you guys, I told you so many times, all I need is just one good, healthy off season so I can really just build, actually take a ton of build. So when my next meet comes in June, I, I'm gonna say it right now, man, like 500 is gonna fall in June. It, it's, it, I have you no know, doubt in my mind, I will smoke a 500 pound squat by the time my next meet hits up in June. Anyway, I've got some back down sets of six. 64 pounds, so I'm, gonna knock, so I'm gonna knock that out and then I'll see you guys on sumos. Slow. Hips low, legs drop, hips drop. Alright guys, so in terms of my sumo, um, I'm going to show you guys a few clips. So, this is what my sumo like usually looks like. Pretty um, basic sumo stance. My chin is pretty much right at like you know the ring, and um, it feels fine as far as like positioning. But you guys can see that my hips were shooting up just slightly. I wasn't like actively hip shooting hard enough, or really like like staying in my quads. I was kind of like with the conventional point out the slack is really easy. I do so aggressively. I'm very explosive, but with this, I'm almost like, <laughs> for lack of a better term, I'm kind of like. Uh, I'm kind of like just babying it. It's almost because it's like because consciously, not even self -conscious, consciously, I still sometimes worry about like, oh, is the hip gonna flare up again? So I got so focused on trying to have the form be pretty and be safe instead of focusing on actually pulling in a way that's optimal for my leverages, like you know, as far as hip heights. I'm currently starting too low because my hips are shooting up. So before I kind of started working on actively pulling the slack out better and actually tensioning the lift the way I should, the same way I do my conventional, I just tried moving my stance a little bit so I could stay in the quads a little bit more, a little bit more quad engagement. And that's what this, and that's, and this is what that looked like. So as you guys can see, it definitely looked better, but on some of those reps, my hips still were coming up just slightly a little bit. So last week, um, what I ended up doing was with that same closer stance, really just not worrying about like the hip too much, really focusing on properly pulling the slack out of the bar. Like when I'm shooting my hips up, I'm pulled up on that bar as if though I'm trying to already lift the weight completely, just like conventional. I'm not just like, you know, kind of babying the bar up against the place. I'm actively pulling on the weight already. That way when I load my hips in, as soon as they hit position, the weight just flies up. Um, and that felt a lot better. But now what Brendan's having me test today is seeing now that I'm actively able to do that with like, you know, the hip shoot and aggressively getting the slack out and actually seems a little better, go back to the wider stance I was at before and see how that feels. So I'm gonna warm up with that till about, you know, 375, 380. And if it feels good and moves well, I'll stick with that. And if not, I can just bring my stance back in before I get to my top set. So let's see how that goes.
there. So warm buildups were feeling pretty good with the wider stance, um, all the way up to like 408 pounds. But then when I got to like 420, 430, I just started noticing like my hips would shoot up just slightly before um, the bar actually started moving. So what I did to show you guys an example is I hit um, I hit a single with 440 with the wider stance. can see even though I'm taking my time my hips still come up just slightly first before my legs start to extend so then I tried it with the closer stance you guys can see my hips didn't rise first at all it's a lot better so now I'm gonna uh, continue my build-up sets of four with the closer stance knowing that that's what's gonna be more optimal for me So that was a huge PR for me, 480 pounds for top set of four at RP8. And now I think my best pull ever, and this was like before I started working on the Brennan, this, and this was on pound plates and a deadlift bar, but was 475 pounds for five reps and like RP10. So to come in and hit, you know, five more pounds of that on my secondary day for a set of four at RP8, I definitely feel like Brennan are going to make the switch to moving this to sumo to the main comp loop because even though obviously my leverages aren't necessarily great for conventional or sumo, it's just so much easier for me to set my back, keep my lower back extended with sumo because I just have more room. Like the way my um, the length of my legs and the way my hips and certain stuff like that make it very difficult to get into that nice extended position on the conventional, but it's it's pretty much effortless on the sumo. So even though it's still not you know. A sexy sumo, it's, it looks a lot better than my conventional, and more importantly, it feels a lot better like from a functional perspective. So I feel like that's the move we're gonna make, especially to the fact that I hit 496 for a triple, like say like RP10 on my primary day, and they came and hit, they still hit 481 for a four RP8 on the secondary day. But there's no telling what I'll be able to do if I actually move the sumo to the primary day. So I think that's gonna be the move um, moving forward. And it's just so funny how like all these things that I've been working on my sumo are things that I constantly like, you know teach my clients who pull sumo because I understand the application of it, I understand what it should look like on them, but I don't have any clients that are built the way I am, so I, a lot of things I'm having to figure out for myself as I go, whereas with other people, like my clients, it's so, it's so easy to figure out, hey, this is what you need to do, figure out how to cue it for them, but from cueing them different ways and finding the cues that works best for them, it's also helping to find the cues that will work best for me, along with having an excellent coach like Brandon, shout out to you, homie. Um, because not only does it make me a better athlete, but it just makes me a better coach as well. So anyway, gonna finish off with bench and then get out of here. Alright guys, so I hit 275 pounds for a set of four at RP8. It was actually supposed to be a set of five at RP8. The reason that I stopped at four is because when I said I hit the four rep, I already hit the RP8. So I knew that if I would have gone for the fifth rep, it would have overshot and it simply wasn't worth doing. Um, cool thing is, I'm pretty sure I stand like, like a four rep PR or whatever, even so. Um, but it just wasn't worth doing to me. Like even though bench is something where like it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't fatigue as hard as far as the deadlift. So if you overexert on it a little bit, it's not gonna throw you off the horse in your week. I, I just whatever the fourth rep, I was just like, why? What's the point? Like I know it's gonna be overshot. So just take the four rep PR, call it. Back. And I'm pretty sure once Brendan sees it, he's gonna agree that I made the right call as far as just stopping it right there. So um gonna knock on my back. And then that's pretty much gonna be it for this video, guys. Pretty much it for this workout. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest, I actually like, like, I'm happy that today went as well as it did because I did not want to come to the gym today because for those of you who don't know, today is Tuesday, uh, January 29th. Let me make sure I got that correct. Yeah, 29th. So Kingdom Hearts 3 officially came out today, but I pre-ordered it, so your boy got it yesterday at 9 p.m. and I've just been playing it non-stop. Like, I've only stopped pretty much, you know, like, answer emails, take care of client work. Uh, walk my dog, eat, 
and then you know of course having to sleep because you know we got to do that um so i actually like legit did not want to come and even work out today because i'm enjoying it that much those of you who don't know i'm a total kingdom hearts fanboy i've played every single game watched you know every video every walk through all that good jazz man because i just i'm that much in depth with loving the story the characters everything like that and the fact that it's taken years for kingdom hearts 3 to officially come out even though i've been enjoyed playing all these different side games and stuff they are a part of the story for those of you who don't know it's just been uh it's nice to have been waiting on for a long time and it's healthy man like i feel like you guys are a known type person where i'll overcome whatever i need to i'll still get my training done stuff like that but i think it's healthy to have something you know have those moments where you don't feel like training because one of the shows discipline we still come in and get it but then beyond that it's just you know just one of those things where it's nice to have my focus kind of on something else and still be able to come in here and kill it the way i did but yeah just want to show you guys my training i'll be um Next video, training video that I do anyway will be like I said, my last SPD intensity day on this block, hoping to hit some really big PRs on that day as well. And then hoping to make it a little bit more informed on that day too. I'm gonna to be going over some actual tips that I think we're gonna be helping you guys and covering different topics related to health, fitness, and social well-being. Kind of like covering, you know, each of those three major topics in that video. Um, and just covering things I think a lot of people kind of either misunderstand or don't think about. But that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If not, leave a comment down below. Let me know. What can we do better? Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later.